Good morning and welcome class. Um, I hope you've all been able to join me this week. First of all, thank you again so much for all of your lovely photos. I've actually been inundated with them. Um, I have put some forward to go up on the Facebook page, the school Facebook page. Um, but unfortunately, I've been received so many that I've not been able to put all of them up. So if you're not on there this week, keep checking the page each week. Keep sending me your photos and I will try to rotate all of the photos from you guys. So at least everyone gets a chance to show what they're doing on the school Facebook page. OK, so this week, because VE Day is on Friday and we're all being encouraged to have a picnic, weather dependent, in the garden, put the bunting up and sort of celebrate VE Day at home socially distancing, I thought what we'd do is we'd do some picnic dishes. So you should have received the recipes for potato salad and also mini savoury tarts. So we're going to start this video with the mini savoury tarts. The potato salad video will come afterwards. But you can choose which one you want to do. You don't have to do both. If you want to, then fantastic. So first of all, for the tarts, if you've got the recipe sheet, it says that you need to preheat your oven to 180 degrees. So we're going to go and turn the oven on now. OK. Anyway, and we need to also prep our tin. So I've actually just got a basic bun tin. It's quite a shallow one. And I'm going to show you how to prep that so the tarts don't stick. So if you bear with me, I'll just move the camera. OK, hopefully you can all see that. OK, so I've got my tin, got my sink. I'm doing it over the sink so I don't make a huge mess that I need to clean up. First thing I'm going to do is I've got some olive oil. OK, and I'm just going to put a little bit into one of the trays, not in all of it. And then with my pastry brush, I'm going to just dip it in there and swirl it around. Might have put a little bit too much in here. So you only need a really, really small part of the oil. You don't want to fry the pastry. So once you've done six, if you've got any excess oil, just tip that out. We'll give that tray a wipe so it doesn't burn before we put it in the oven. And then just spread out the remaining oil into the other six compartments. Okay. You shouldn't have pools of oil. If you do have pools of oil, just get some kitchen roll, give it a little wipe and then just Sorry, bear with me, just grabbing my kitchen roll here. Just give it a little wipe and take off the excess. It's always worth going around the edge of the tray, because otherwise this is how you get those brown burnt marks on your tray that are impossible to get off. Okay. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take some plain flour. You can use self-raising or bread flour. It's not a problem. And I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit in each of the trays. Not too much. Again, you don't want a huge amount. Okay, just like that. And then I'm going to tap this flour all around the tray so it coats it. And I'm going to do that over the sink. So first of all, I'm just going to tap it forward. Then I'm going to tap it to the left or the right, it depends on which way you're doing it, and bring it round. Okay, and then you can shake the excess off into the sink. So that's what your tray should look like. Okay, rinse away any excess flour, obviously, down the sink. And now we're ready to start baking. So I'm going to move you back to the dining room where we will prep our ingredients for baking the tarts. So now I'm going to show you how to prep a few ingredients. I always get asked, especially by some year seven or eight students, how to chop certain vegetables. So I thought I might as well show you and incorporate those into my tart. So we'll recap the safe methods of cooking of the bridge hold and the claw hold. And I'm going to show you how to chop a mushroom and also a spring onion. The spring onion is the one I always get asked how to do. Okay. Right, so we'll do the mushroom first, okay? I've got a large knife again. You can use a smaller one if you want, but make sure that you aren't using just the tip of the knife and you are using the main body of the knife. 
you want a good grip on the knife here instead of holding it with your finger out like this have a good grip on the knife and that way you're less likely to have it slip out of your fingers if you are cutting something that's hard so mushrooms quite difficult to cut because it can obviously roll around I always teach uh, year sevens when I'm at school to take out the centre, turn it upside down, and then we're gonna do that bridge hold. So it's knife on the vegetable first, hand over the top, okay? So you can cut that in half. You can do it again that way if you want, and just keep chopping like that if you are comfortable with that method. The other method is the claw hold. Now you can see I've got my finger out here, haven't I? It is uh, important just to tuck that away again and just keep chopping and again you can use your claw hold you want to chop these quite small so we're just tucking our fingers in like this so we're not going to catch the ends of our fingers with the knife okay there we go i'm chopping on two boards here i've got my pastry board underneath and quite a large wooden board it's slightly too high for me which obviously normally you would be stood up chopping in the kitchen but I'm sitting down here at my table as it's impossible to video under my kitchen cabinets right okay so we've chopped our mushroom up I'm going to pop that in a little bowl move it out of the way and then we're going to tackle the spring onion don't worry if you've got bits of mushroom on your board still it's not going to contaminate the onion. You can chop the stalk up as well. You don't need to waste that. It's all perfectly edible. Okay. Right, so spring onion. Okay. What you're wanting to put in the dish is as much of it as you can. Now, sometimes some of the leaves will be a bit sort of old and you won't want to eat those. So I just pull those off. And other times you'll get really lovely fresh leaves coming out the top here and you can eat those. First thing we're going to do though, using that claw hold, is cut the root off. We don't want that in our dish. The next thing you can do is peel off any layers that are perhaps not quite so nice to eat. So it's just the one there. And then I'm going to chop that here. I'm going to incorporate a bit of this stem, but not that one. Okay, I'm going to then wash the onion. So we'll take that just to the sink and give it a quick wash. Don't need to dry the onion, but please dry your hands so they're not slippy on the knife. Okay, so I'm gonna use the claw hold just to chop this. Okay, if you're feeling a bit chefy, you can put the point of the knife on the board and just bring it down. Mind you, don't cut your fingers though, just do it nice and slowly. We don't wanna see any Gordon Ramses, not at this stage. Okay, with this onion here, I'm gonna cut it in half again. Now I'm going to do that bridge hold and I'm going to cut it along the length of the onion. It can be quite slippy, so just be careful. And you might not do it completely in half, in which case just cut again. Okay, sometimes you get these little layers here that are quite slippy to cut. I've got my finger out on that knife again, haven't I? So double check that. Hold it on a nice safe grip. Okay. Pop that over there. And again, bridge hold, and I'm going to cut again down this length. Now the onion will fan out, so you need to make sure that your knife is nice and sharp. Okay, you're more likely to cut yourself with a blunt knife than you are with a sharp one, because it will slip along the vegetable that you're cutting. Right, I've chopped up another one here, because I'm going to put two in. So I'm just going to pop that onion back in that bowl. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to whisk up my eggs, okay, in some milk. So I've just got a little antibacterial wipe here so I don't have to keep running and getting a cloth. So I'm just going to give that a wipe over. I've got two eggs here. Okay, we're going to mix those in the bowl with some milk. 
So first of all, we need to crack the eggs. Now, again, this is something that year sevens can sometimes, and year eights can sometimes be a bit frightened of doing. You want to hold the egg along the shortest circumference, not at the ends here, okay? And you're gonna tap this bit of the egg on the bowl, okay? So if you do it like that, you can then turn it upside down so it doesn't all start to come out and then just slowly let it pour into the bowl. One sharp crack is all you need on the edge of the bowl. If you tap, tap, tap on the bowl, okay, you're gonna get shell in, okay? Now, if you do get shell into it, that's the Sheffield way of doing it, and I've done it like this because I know I get shell in it every time, so I can show you how to take that shell out now. If you do get shell in the bowl, okay, just get some water, finger in the water, and what you should be able to do is just pull that shell all the way out rather than chasing it around the bowl, okay? Pop that on my cloth. I've got another little bit in there. So finger back in the water. You might have to just move the shell so you can get it, okay? I've lost it, hold on, bear with me. Finger in the bowl, there it is. Okay, and take that out. All right, don't think there's any more in there. All right, so I've got that now in my bowl. I'm gonna put my milk, okay, into my bowl as well. And then I need a fork, so I'm gonna have to go and get one of those. I need a fork to just give that a good whisk up. Now you can season the tarts with salt and pepper at any time, but I actually like to season the egg mix because then I know I've done it and it's evenly distributed. So at this point, I'm just gonna take my salt, put a little bit in there, and also my pepper. You don't have to put pepper in it if you don't want to. You can put chili flakes if you like a little heat, but please let everybody know <laughs> before you Serve them up because not everybody likes them. Right, give that another little whisk around. Okay. So that's my egg mix done. Now I've also grated some cheese. We're going to put a little bit of cheese into the tarts. Again, you don't have to. All of these ingredients, the mushrooms and the onions and the cheese, they're all optional. So I have provided a list of ingredients that work really well in the tarts on the recipe sheet. But any meat that you're putting in it, please, please make sure that it is pre-cooked. Um, obviously, your deli meats like your ham and your chicken that you get in a packet that you can just make a sandwich with, then you're quite able to just put those in without cooking them again because they've already been cooked before they've been packaged. I'm going to make vegetarian ones because I'm going to make the potato salad and I've got some really nice gammon ham that I'm going to put into my potato salad as an optional extra. So I've got my cheese. Okay. I've also weighed out my flour, okay, and I've chopped up my butter into small cubes, which makes it easier to rub together with the flour to make the pastry. Now, I have gone outside and picked some thyme, and I'm going to put some thyme in my tarts. You don't have to, you can use just dried herbs, or if you've got fresh herbs from the supermarket, just chop a few up. And you can either, again, put those in the fill-in, but I'm actually going to put the thyme in my pastry to flavour the pastry as a little extra. Right, I think uh, we're about ready to start. Oh, you do need some water. I'm going to go and change this water before we start making the pastry because I've put my fingers in it after putting them in the egg. So you need a little bit of water and it's always handy to have a spoon because we're not going to pour the water into the pastry mix, otherwise it will become too wet. We're literally going to put it in a little bit at a time like that, okay? If you're really good with a jug, then you can use a jug, but it is handy to have a spoon. Okay, so we'll get organised. I'll get cleaned up here a little bit and then we'll come back and make the pastry. So I've got a few things ready for me to make the pastry. First of all, I've got myself a bowl. I like to use a metal bowl because it keeps the um, pastry cold, the butter, but you don't have to. A plastic one's fine. You can use a pan. 
um, a, you can use a sort of um, a wooden bowl if you really want to, anything that you've got to hand, a Tupperware box, it really doesn't matter, okay? So into that bowl, I'm gonna be putting my flour, but before I do that, I'm also gonna let you know I've got my rolling pin, okay? And again, if you don't have a rolling pin, you can use a bottle or a tall glass, or if you haven't got any of those that are suitable, when we come to make the pastry, and I'll show you uh, while we're making it, you can just tear a little bit of the pastry off and flatten it with the with sort of like the heel of your hand, this part here. We want to try and avoid the palm of our hand on the pastry because that's the warmest part of our hands. So when we're making pastry, we use our fingertips the majority of the time. But if you haven't got anything to roll it out, there is another way and I will show you. Now, you can use a cutter to cut your pastry out, but you can also use the edge of a glass as well. And when we come to cutting it, I'm actually gonna use the glass so we can show you how to do that rather than just using the cutter. Okay, I think we're probably ready. So I'll move the camera down. I'm gonna to have to stand up for this as well because I can't actually do the rubbing in method whilst I'm sat down. So into my bowl, I'm going to put my flour. Okay, I've made sure I've got clean hands again. I've given them a wash. So pop your butter cubes into your bowl as well. Now, I always teach this um, by saying you want to put your hands like diggers. Okay, so you're going to lift up some of the um, butter and flour. And first of all, you're just going to coat those butter cubes with the flour. Next thing you're going to do is you're going to squash those butter cubes and let them fall back in to the flour. Okay, and I always go one, two, three, and let it fall back. So hands like diggers, I don't wanna see any of this because if you're just tickling it and moving it around the bowl like this, it's not gonna work. You've got to squash that butter together. Okay. It's gonna probably take about four or five minutes. So I'm just gonna let the video run while you do this, because you can't touch my phone that I'm recording on at the moment, because my hands are all dirty. So just do this with me, and then you can stop or pause the video if you're not quite ready the same time as I am. Okay, if you want to check to see whether you've got any lumps in there, then you can just get your bowl, give it a little shake, and you can see all those lumps will come to the top. So. Once it starts to make breadcrumbs, you don't want to be quite so robust with it. You just want to be a bit more gentle with it. And when you get to the stage where you think you're nearly done, very gently, just roll your hands one on top of the other to get rid of any remaining lumps. Again, shake the bowl like that and the big lumps will come to the top. What you don't want is big lumps of butter that will just melt when the pastry is cooking and that will give you a very uneven pastry with very fatty bits in it where that chunk of butter hasn't been rubbed in. Okay, I think that's probably about right. Okay, now this is the bit where I'm going to add my herbs. If you want to add again chilli flakes, you can do, but don't put too many in, okay. So I've got my herbs in there. I'm just going to move those around a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to get my water and my spoon. Okay. And I'm going to put one, two tablespoons of water in it. Now, I'm going to try and bring this together into a ball. I'm sort of squeezing gently and then turning it upside down. What I'm not doing is squeezing it out through my fingers. You find, dependent on what kind of butter you've used, you'll find that you'll need different amounts of water. So you might not need the same amount that I've used. Now I can feel that this pastry is coming together into a ball. I'm just gonna just push it onto the other bits. Now, it could do with a little more water, not too much, so it doesn't break up. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to use the spoon. I'm just going to pop my fingers in and just dab a little bit of water onto it and then fold that round. So I've incorporated all of the flour now 
and the butter together into this ball. Okay, and I'm going to pop that onto my baking board. Just take off the bits that are stuck to your fingers. If you've got clean hands, it's perfectly fine. Okay. So I'll move my bowl away and my tea towel. That was just to stop it from being noisy on the video and to stop it slipping around. And I've got my pastry here. So I'm just going to work it a little bit. It's a little bit like making bread, a small knead, but you don't want to overwork this. Okay, because to get a nice flaky pastry, you need to just manipulate it a little bit. Okay, now I've got one of these boards that doesn't really stick to pastry, but before you roll it out, what you might want to do is pop a little bit of flour, okay, onto your board or your work surface. If you're just doing this on your kitchen work surface, pop a little flour, pop some flour on your rolling pin as well, or your glass, whatever you're using, and then start to roll. If you don't have a rolling pin, I did say that you could just get a ball of dough, okay, and then with that part of your hand, just flatten it, and you kind of want to make sure it doesn't stick, so turn it over a little bit and coat the other side with the flour, and then what you can do is just use that to obviously cut out your pastry shape. So we might as well do that one. Okay, there we go. And that would be my pastry. Now if it sticks like this, you might want to get a little knife. I've got my sharp one here. So I'm just gonna use that one, just give a little wipe with an antibacterial wipe again. And you can get that underneath your pastry circle. Okay, now if you are using a rolling pin, okay, you want to make sure that you roll out that pastry nice and thin. So roll it one way, pick it up, put the flour underneath the board, give it a half turn and roll it the other way. Now if I keep doing this, it's going to roll and rock that camera around. So I'm going to try and do it as gently as I can. You don't need to roll it out too thin. It wants to be a couple of millimetres thick. Okay. One thing you don't want, though, is for it to be too thick, otherwise it won't cook. So if you get to this stage where you can't lift it up again, just roll it onto your board and then use your glass to cut out your shape. So this one here might be a little thick. If that is the case, then... We can just roll it out again with the rolling pin or squash it, squash it even further flat with our hands. I'm going to incorporate it back into the leftover pastry to roll out again. Now, in terms of my um, cutter, as I said, I'm using a glass. And what I've done is I've made sure that the glass fits over the top of the hole of the tray with a bit of an overlap. That way, when I cut one out like this... Okay, what I can do is lift that up and then with my tray, I can sort of pop that down and just gently push it into the, the hole of the baking tray. And I've still got a nice lip around the top. It's not too short. So I'm going to cut some more of these out using my glass. So one, two... Three. Go around the edge of the pastry, okay, get as many circles out of it as you can. Now that there won't fit, so what we'll do is we'll come back to that pastry and it's a bit thin on that side. So I'm going to pop these into my tray, one by one. I'll show you my tray after I've finished. Okay, if you've got a palette knife, you can obviously use a palette knife to do this. I don't actually have one at home, so it's one thing that I do need to remember to bring back from school next time I'm in, so I can use it when I'm demonstrating and cooking at home. So I'm not going to waste that pastry. I'm going to just combine it together again. If it's getting a little dry, just pop your fingers into your water again, but if you just Warm it up a little bit in the palm of your hands if it is getting dry. The butter should melt a little bit more. And then what you can do 
is just roll that out again. So I'm going to try and roll this out nice and carefully so I'm not rocking the video. If it's sticking again to your rolling pin, just pop a little bit of flour on. Lift that up, pop the flour underneath a bit. Roll it out. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six tarts there. This will make between 10 and 12, dependent on how thin you're making it. So I'm not going to try and lift this again. I'm just going to cut it out with the glass as such. So I've got seven, eight, mm, probably just get another one in there and roll it out again. Nine, might get the 12. Let's have a look. Now I've got eight now, so probably going to get about 10 or 11. Okay, obviously if you want to make more, just double up the ingredients from the recipe sheet or do half as much again. Just depends how many you're cooking for. They will keep for a couple of days in the fridge, but really they need to be eaten by day two. And you can reheat them in a warmed oven. Okay, around about 180. They'll only take a couple of minutes just to warm through. But if you aren't eating them straight away, please, once they've cooled, keep them in the fridge because you've got egg and protein in there. So you don't want them picking up any bacteria and that bacteria developing because they've been left out on the side and it's nice and warm, which is what bacteria like to grow. Okay. So I'm going to get another one there, just another one just there. Okay, again, if you're slower than me at doing this, just pause the video. Oops, sorry, that's my rolling pin knocking my tripod. Just pause the video and catch up and then restart it. Might be able to get another one out of this. I'm going to see if I can roll it, do it that way and then that way. That's annoying isn't it when you've got 11 not 12. Okay, pop that there. I could try and get another one out of that couldn't I just to fill the tray. If you've only got 10 or 7 or 8 you probably find that your pastry is a bit too thick so the best thing to do would be to combine all the pastry together again and roll it out again and just make it a bit thinner this time otherwise you might find your pastry bottoms don't cook and as my daughter says there's nothing worse than a soggy bottom all right there we go okay so Let's clear this up a little bit, move everything to the side. I can show you my tray now. Okay, so I'm just going to gently push those down into the tray. Okay. If your pastry tears, just fold it over and watch it together. Pastry is very forgiving, nobody will know. Okay, right. I'm just going to go and wash my hands before the next bit, so I'll just turn the video off and I'll be back in a second. Okay, so I've had a little tidy up. It's always good to tidy up as you go along when you're cooking, then you don't create a huge mess and it also stops any cross-contamination that may occur in the kitchen. So I'm going to move the camera down and just explain what I've done whilst I stopped the video. Okay, so first of all, I've got my tarts here. I've got my cheese, I'm going to need that, I've got my mushrooms and I've also got my spring onions and I've popped my egg and milk mix in a jug. Now this is actually um, a gravy fat separating jug, the spout comes down from the bottom and I found this really easy to actually 
pour into the pastry cases. But what you might want to do is just use that big spoon again. In fact, I'll go and get one in a minute so I can show you what I mean. So you can spoon in the egg mix. Let me go and grab that spoon. Okay, so I'm going to put my fill in in my pastry first. If you do it afterwards, you tend to find that the egg mix will spill over the top. So I'm going to put some cheese here and some. Okay. You don't want to overfill these because you've got to get the egg in as well. All right. Now I'm going to leave some without cheese in that just have the egg in one or two because my daughter doesn't like cheese and the only way she'll eat mushrooms is in a samosa along with spring onions so I'll leave that one there she's never had them before so hopefully she will try this one here I'm going to put some spring onions now the rest of these spring onions I'm going to use in my potato salad so if you are making both recipes, then cut enough onions to put in your potato salad as well. Okay. There we are. Picking any bits up that might land on the tray. See if I can get some mushrooms in. You can put the mushrooms in your potato salad if you've got any left over, if you like raw mushrooms too. Uh, I'm only going to put a few bits in here though. So this is going to be like a mini quiche. Okay, because it's so small, we don't have to bake the pastry cases first. If you're going to make a really big quiche, then you would need to bake the pastry for a little bit. But what you do is you blind bake it. So you cover it with baking paper and you put some baking beans in it or peas that are keep the weight of the paper down onto the pastry and you cook that pastry just a little bit before adding your filling to make sure that the bottom cooks properly. All right, there we go, I think that's enough. All right, so let's pour this egg, watch me spill this egg now. So I'm gonna just pop just a little bit in. Okay, I don't want it to overfill the tart, so I'm just leaning that spout actually on the tray so feel free to turn your tray around okay I'll show you how to do it with the spoon so if you haven't got a jug you can just use a cup or a mug and literally just pop some on the spoon and pour it in like that it's quite a good way to do the middle ones where you can't lean the jug on it okay if you do spill any egg onto your tray you can just get a bit of kitchen roll just wipe it off because what you don't want to do is burn that egg onto the tray. You don't want it to overflow either while it's cooking because that will, A, it will stick your pastries to the tin so you might not be able to get them out and B, it will make a real mess of your cooking tray. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to turn my Tray around. I've got a feeling that that empty one there is probably going to bubble over. So I'll be able to show you. Let's have a look. There we go. I'll pour a bit more in. Okay, try and keep your pastry cases level as well. That one's a little bit off centre. So put a bit more in that one. Some in that one. Okay, so my oven's preheated. And I'm going to pop these, using oven gloves, onto the top of the uh, shelf of the, uh, sorry, the top shelf of the oven in the middle. And they'll take about 15 to 20 minutes to cook. So um, everyone's oven's different, even though they're all meant to operate at the same temperature. So just check them, ask your mum, uh, your auntie, your nan, whoever's house you're isolating at at the moment, what their oven's like and whether it cooks quickly or whether it takes a bit longer and just get them to help you put them in and out of the oven so you're nice and safe. Please make sure you're using oven gloves um, and following instructions from whoever's in the kitchen with you. I'll show you the finished products at the end of the video but I hope you enjoy them.
eat them with a good salad and some vegetables. Bye!